Hey folks, welcome back to the farm. We just got off live chat. We did a live because we just crossed over 14,000 subscribers. It's been an amazing run, folks. I really love you guys. We could not do it without you. And our content's still free here on the Mark Kelly Farm YouTube channel. We don't want to charge you for anything. So we just want to get the word out to you how to do stuff the old way and give you some recipes and try to help you guys out a little bit and try to inspire you to do stuff, uh, grow a garden and can and do all that stuff yourself. So really glad you guys are here and congratulations to all of you for we just going over 14,000. So everybody on live chat, I told you we're going to do this recipe every now and then when Kelly's working. I like to do a nice recipe because a lot of the stuff I do is kind of fast because I've been outside all day doing stuff. So I want to treat her to a real nice supper tonight. So we're going to make a dumpling chicken pot pie. So let's get after it. So I was in town earlier at one of my uh, mentoring sessions at the high school and I stopped by the store and got a rotisserie chicken because at our store you can almost buy a chicken for what you can purchase a raw one for and cook it. It's only eight bucks already cooked for you. So we're going to take this chicken, we're going to debone it and then I'm going to take all the bones and the carcass and everything else and put it in this pot with all of the trimmings off the vegetables that we're going to do and we're going to make some stock because we need stock for our recipe so we're utilizing everything so let's get this deboned now if you got access to whole chickens or buy whole chickens at the store because they're cheaper than buying cut up chickens you can uh, just cook this the night before works really well let's take our truss strings off of here and then we can start deboning this. But these chickens are so cheap that we do it pretty often um, when we're in a hurry or haven't had time to make dinner or whatever. I'm going to put my chicken we're saving in that other, in the lid. But it debones real easy. Now the skin, I'll throw in the pot. And we're just going to take the chicken off the bone and I don't want any of the, like the cartilage off of the the uh, chicken leg because Kelly if she bites into that cartilage she'll be she'll be done with dinner so just the meat so all the bones and the skin go in there take this wing off super easy to take this thing apart now, if you watch this channel on a regular basis, you've always heard me say things like, Kelly doesn't care for this, Kelly doesn't like that. That doesn't mean she's a sissy girl or a girly girl by any means. Um, she gets right in there. She likes venison and all that other stuff. It's, a, it's more of a texture thing for her. Um, certain textures really get to her. And then the only other thing is spicy stuff. But I will say... When I cook, I, I tend to add a little spice here and there, and she, she's getting like a tolerance for it now because things that would have bothered her in the past are bothering her less now. I'll taste something, I go, oh, I might have got that too hot for Kelly, and then she'll eat it and not say a thing. But uh, when you're married, you know, you try to keep your spouse, do things that your spouse likes, you know not a big deal. It's not like I can't add things later to spice my dish up a little bit. I can do that with any of the like the hot sauces and stuff that I make. Very easy to do. So we're getting down to the last of this chicken. There's one piece of meat that I really love. It's right here. Or where is it? Oh, I already got them out. These little pieces right here in the chicken back, those are really good. Forget what those are called. 
but uh, we're about ready for the rest of this to go in the pot. So all the rest of that is stock. So I'll just break that up. See if we can break it in half. It all comes apart pretty easy. Like fall apart easy. Okay, there's our chicken. What's left in the pot. Now the other thing you don't want to get rid of is this fantastic juice in here in the in the dish. You can either put it with your chicken. I'll just dump it right here in our stock pot. That way we'll have all that wonderful flavor. That's like liquid gold. You don't want to get rid of that. So let's start chopping our veggies. Alright, first up is our celery. Now we've had this celery for literally two months. And if you wrap your celery in a moist paper towel before you put it in there, not real wet, but just moist, it'll keep your celery from going bad. See, it's still fairly good celery. We'll probably lose that stock there. The rest of it we can use. And even if your celery is on its way out, if you're doing it in soup or something similar, can still be used. I'm not going to use the inner core, but we'll chop those leaves off. We'll throw those leaves right in our pot over here because we're making stock. So that stock's going to be strained. We don't need to worry about this stuff. And then we'll cut our big heavy bottoms off. Throw that in the pot. Turn that white part off, and then I think that'll probably be about the celery amount of celery we need. So I like just coming in on your celery, just coming down it a couple times, about like that before you chop it. And this celery was already washed when we used it the first time. Or I put it back in the bag. But it's going to cook, so if there is anything on it that could cause a problem, it's going to be taken care of in the cooking process. So, just little pieces. Use a chef knife, folks, those little teeny knives that people use forever so we're going to put this on a paper plate and it's going to wait till a little bit later all right we've got a couple carrots we washed we're going to peel them right into our stock pot because we'll use those peels in our stock and then once these are peeled we'll chop the rest up for the main portion of the dish There we go, we'll cut that cut that end off there. Throw that end in the pot too. Got one more to do. Got our celery and our carrots done. I went a little overboard on the carrots, but that's okay. I like carrots better than celery anyway. Now I just took the barely the ends off of these because they're a little dirty, but I'm gonna cut another, get past that core a little bit. We'll just throw that in the pot and then we'll get a little further on our top. We'll just throw that in the pot. Now we cut my onion in half all the way and then I don't mess around. I just take that whole first peel off, get down to the good onion and we'll just throw this in our stock pot as well. Like I said, we're going to strain that out. So, doesn't matter. We need the flavor in there too. So, I'm probably going to use only half of this onion because it's a very large onion. So, I cut them different ways sometimes. 
they stay together a lot better if you cut them from uh, north to south. But sometimes I just slice them crossways because the good Lord chops them the other way for you already. And then when I get down a little ways, I'll turn around like that. And I believe that's going to be enough onion. Yeah, that'll be plenty. So we'll put our veggies in the fridge for later when we start putting the dish together. And we'll get going on our stock. And you can see our stock pot looks kind of like the, uh, the garbage pail of the kitchen. But that's all going to cook down and, and create a real nice stock. So we're going to get some water. We'll cover this just to the top with water. Okay, we got our water in. We're going to get fire going underneath our stock. Keep it on high. We're going to put probably about three cloves worth of crushed garlic in our pot. And so now we'll get some seasoning. Now we ended up with a jar of poultry herbs. I don't know where it came from because usually I just use our fresh herbs here on the farm. So we're going to use some of this. It's got all the right herbs in it. We'll use about probably a teaspoon and a half, which is a half a tablespoon. Now, you don't have to worry about the amounts in here. You can put anything in here you want. Uh, go crazy with it. Uh, whatever herbs you like, whatever spices you like, if you like a, a seasoned salt or whatever that you like, put that in there. Just really doesn't matter. All right, we've got a lid on. We're going to bring this thing to a boil. We'll turn it down to a simmer. We'll let this cook pretty much until we need it. We only need like a cup or two of stock for our recipe. So, Well, our stock pot has been simmering for about three hours. We're going to go ahead and strain this out, let the stock cool a little bit. It's about an hour and a half before Kelly gets home. So we can't really get started with everything yet, but we'll do this. Now our pots, these have these strainer deals on the lid. Come in really handy. They're wherever is the brand. I've used these for years. I love these pots. Oh, and it's got a, a fine or a, a coarse side like that and a fine side like that. So let's try the fine side first. Look at that beautiful stock. Tastes really good. I added a little bit of salt to it because you don't want your stock to detract from your dish. But that would be really good just with some noodles in it make a little noodle soup. So we're going to wait about uh, 30 minutes. We'll chop up our chicken and then we can get this thing started. So we've got about an hour before Kelly gets home from work. So we're going to get the party started here into our pan. This is a new one to the channel. Probably haven't seen this one before. Uh, we got a half a stick of butter or a quarter cup. We're going to melt that down and then we're going to throw our veggies in there. Okay, our butter's melted. In goes our trinity here. Now if you're wondering about the amounts, I would say about a cup, two and a cup, a cup and a half of each, depending on your taste. You could do more of one, less of the other if you want. I want the chicken to be the star of the show. And I also forgot to tell you, do this in an oven safe pan because we're going to put this pan right in the oven to finish it off. So we're going to let these vegetables saute until they're looking pretty good. And then we'll bring you back. While we are waiting for our vegetables to get soft, we're going to go ahead and put together our topping for our dumpling chicken pot pie. So we have our other half of a stick of butter in here, half a cup, or excuse me, quarter cup. So to that we're going to add a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. 
And then we're going to also add a uh, two cups of Bisquick, just regular old Bisquick to the mix. Anytime we do dumplings, we use Bisquick. Now there's recipes online to make your own Bisquick. If you don't keep it in the cupboard, I keep it in the cupboard as a staple just so I have it. And this is a two cup measuring cup. We'll put that in there. Now we want to add two thirds cup of buttermilk. And if you don't have buttermilk, use your regular milk, which is what we're going to do. And you can make buttermilk. So for every third of a cup, you need a teaspoon of lemon juice or white vinegar. So we have two thirds of a cup here. We're going to add two teaspoons of lemon juice. And that's our replacement for buttermilk. Getting lemon juice out all over the counter. So we'll give that a stir. And then we'll add that to the mix. Pour that right in there. And then we're going to add a half a cup of cheddar cheese. This is an 8 ounce package. So we're going to add half of that. About right there. And then we're going to mix it up. There's our dough now that it's done. Now this is basically a copycat recipe of Red Lobster biscuits like the cheddar biscuits. So you can cook these as cheddar biscuits if you want. Leave out the garlic and the butter, though mix that the garlic and the butter together. And then mix your Bisquick, your buttermilk, and your cheese. And then bake it at 450 degrees for probably 10 or 12 minutes until they turn golden brown. And then brush your garlic and butter on top. But we're going to use these for dumplings on top of our chicken and dumpling uh, pot pie. Remember our chicken and dumpling recipe, dumplings are basically just biscuit dough. Alright, our vegetables are starting to soften up. We put the lid on it to uh, jump start that process a little bit, let them steam. So we'll come back when these are ready. Our vegetables are soft, our carrots are a little soft. So we're going to preheat our oven to 375. And then we're going to dump in a quarter cup of flour into our vegetable mixture and two more teaspoons of that poultry seasoning and we're going to give that a stir basically making a roux with that butter that's in the pan there that we cooked the veggies in you basically just want to coat all your flour around about medium heat which is pretty good for this this burner it's a larger burner want to make sure you don't burn things in your skillet. Your smoke alarm is not a kitchen timer. So now that that's thoroughly stirred in, we're going to dump in two whole cups of that beautiful chicken broth that we made. I'm going to stir that around a little bit. And then now we're going to measure out a cup of heavy cream and we're going to add that as well and then we're going to stir all that in now as this comes to a boil it's going to get thick Now you'll want to stir this occasionally as you bring it to a boil. Make sure you scrape the whole bottom because you don't want anything sticking to the bottom and burning. Just waiting for it to come to a simmer. All right, we're at a simmer. So now we're going to take our chunks of chicken we're going to dump the whole thing in. Ooh, there's a couple pieces i got to eat. So as soon as it's stirred in well, we're going to turn the fire off. All 
I wish you could smell this right now. It's just absolutely incredible. Now, if you wanted to take this dish a different way, you absolutely could. If you cook some egg noodles up or something and throw this on some egg noodles, it would be amazing. Put it over some toast, it would be like chicken SOS. You can go crazy with it, but we're going to go the dumpling pot pie route. Now, if you had a pie shell, you could put this in a pie shell. Put another one on top. Bake it, and you'd have an amazing chicken pot pie. But we're going to dump and top it. All right, fire going off. We've taken our biscuit mix. We've dolloped it on top of our pan here. And our oven is up to temp. We're going to put this in the oven for 18 minutes until everything's nice and bubbly. And the biscuit topping is done. Well, it was all bubbly and delicious. Our biscuits are done. This needs to cool down. Kelly will be here in about 10 minutes. And we'll have supper. There we are. Supper time. Kelly's home. We're going to dive in. Got a whole quart of stock we can put in the fridge. Now, you can make a lot of substitutions in this dish. You can change up the vegetables. Just cut back on some of the others and add whatever you want. Peas, broccoli, whatever would go very well in this dish. Well, I would tell you how good this dish is, but I'll just show you. It's that good. Well, barely any leftovers for tomorrow. Fantastic meal. you got to try this recipe. It'll be your absolute favorite recipe. You're going to be making it once a week. So... Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us here on Mark Kelly Farm.